Hello everyone, and you already know why we all are here today. Finally, after the whole month of waiting, we've got the full version of episode 77. But considering the two secret scenes in it lasted for eight freaking minutes, which is even longer than episode 74 itself, I think it would be fair to say that Boom fed us well with the brand new episode and not just the full version. And yes, it was worth all the wait as this episode was a damn blast to watch. It was absolutely crazy, but even despite the fact that the Alliance experienced some horrible losses, I still was amazed by it because, oh my god, guys, the action was crazy. The lore parts were giving pure insanity, and now we're lost and confused more than ever about what can the Alliance possible do next time to at least get a chance for something like victory. Is Titan TV Man done for, or is there still a chance for him to stay alive and also to get back on his comrade's side? Is the Alliance cooked for real? What kind of technology did TV Man in the beginning meant that shouldn't have gotten into Astro Toilet's hands, because otherwise the world would be deleted from existence? And most importantly, what will Astro Toilets do next as their true leader was revealed? And considering that they had crazily upgraded Astro Duchess with the Turn Titan TV Man on their side. So if you want to get all the answers to these questions, then get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end. Let's go! And be sure to also give this video a like, and subscribe to my channel where I make a lot of Skibidi content. And also don't forget to visit my Discord channel. Okay, so if you are subscribed now, let's continue. And the first secret scene starts right at the beginning of the full episode, and we can see the cameraman's base from Auckland Islands, New Zealand. And by the way, this is the same base we already saw in episode 50, but with some slight changes made. Now it got more guns to guard its entrance as well as camera to observe the enemies approaching. And I can already see a bunch of small references or easter eggs left here by Boom. Firstly, we can see another camera strider near the base's entrance, but I doubt that it's the same strider operated by Mecha Scientist, especially considering that the events of episode 77 happen right at the same time as the battles all over the Earth, which was shown to us exactly in the first secret scene. So I guess it's just another prototype of the same machine. Then we can notice a cameraman in the wheelchair fleeing to the base with his butt on fire. And it's the reference to episode 56, where lucky cameraman was escaping in the similar manner. Why is he in the wheelchair though? Well, apparently his trauma was way heavier. It may look at first sight. Then we can see these two cameramen hugging each other in the distance. But if you thought that something suspicious was going on between them, then you'd be wrong. And let me explain why. All those cameramen going back to the base was returning from the special mission in episode 76, which obviously ended not that well as you remember. And here we can notice how the cameraman behind the commander's back is holding the detached head camera of his comrade, and overall he looks really devastated. But at least this awesome skibidi truck guy survived who we saw in the first part of episode 76. Plus, I also noticed two cameramen scientists discussing something with the skibidi toilets in front of them. And one of these scientists is dressed in the blue suit, which I never saw on cameramen before in this series. And do you see this toilet with helicopter's blades in the distance too? Because it's not actually a skibidi, but it looks more like a skeleton in the hat or something like this. And how do you think, guys, can this weird flying creature turn out to be another representative of the new mysterious race, which is capable of shape-shifting and taking different forms? As we already saw the flying chair that tried to help our POV in episode 76, for example. And by the way, this whole shot is one of the leaks that Stake received for the full episode in low quality. Okay? And then something really interesting happens. The POV gets distracted by the words of the female mutant from episode 75. And yeah, that's definitely her because her facial features and the scar are exactly the same. But the weird thing is that she decided to change some part of her equipment. Now she has the different helmet with the special symbol on it, which indicates that she's the sergeant of the first rank based on USA military hierarchy, which basically confirms that she used to be in the military too, and probably knew the soldiers from Special Government Objects Defense Service really well. And by the way, behind her back we can see the cameraman in the yellow shirt who was the survived POV in episode 75, so it could be him who brought his new friends to this base. And while already editing this video, I also noticed another reference I missed earlier, and it's the Ghost Rider next to the Skibidi Truck Bro. And it's funny because Boom already made a reference to this movie back in the first part of episode 69, where the skull on fire could be noticed in the creepy Skibidi bunker. Okay, and then we can hear her saying to the cameraman from this base, Hey, your comrades, you did not bother saving them. 
Without our help, they would die. Now, Lil Bro, your base is our base. And at first I thought that she was threatening the POV, but then I realized that she was actually having her point. Right now, the Alliance acts almost ruthless towards his own agents, and prioritizes gathering Astro samples more than saving its own people. And of course, it's the jab at TV men first and foremost. So it feels not really like a threat, but we're doing better job saving your people than your own leaders, so now we'll claim your territory as we deserve it more than you do. But that's still an infuriating news for the cold and ever-controlling TV men, and in the next moment we see, um, how upset they are at her. <coughs> so it turns out that all this footage we're watching was shown to us from TV men's laboratory screens as they are monitoring the situation all around the globe, while TV man scientist and Titan TV man are giving their commentary too. So the Titan asks why the Alliance has to cooperate with Skibidi Toilets. Are they that desperate about having to use their help? And in that moment, we're getting shown the exact same location from the Troll Russia Vodka Ushanka leaks I discussed a few days ago. So turns out I was right, and Boom really inserted those in the actual episode. But the surprises don't end there. You know what location this is exactly? It is not just Russia, but it's also Khabarovsk City. Everything is happening in right now. And now I have to make just an insane confession to you guys. I, Isotoile, used to live in this city for quite a while in my life, and yes, you've heard it right. Don't ask me how and why, but it happened in my life. Okay, so let's get back to the episode now. In the background, we see some huge Astro ship floating by, and in general situation looks really sad on the Russian front. So it's no wonder that the cameraman on the left holds the battle of 100% vodka, which is just crazy. And I wonder how he drinks it at all because, well, he's a cameraman with no mouth, but maybe it's the placebo effect he's looking for. Meanwhile, TV Man Scientist comments on this footage how uniting with Skibidi Toilets is necessary in order for the Alliance to survive and also to meet their hiding leader as he knows something crucial which can help the Alliance to win the war with Astro Toilets. And given the fact that the events from this footage were happening before the fourth part of Episode 77 where G-Man revealed himself, I believe that TV Man definitely meant him while talking about the hiding Skibidi leader. Then we see the footage from Amsterdam and, well, the things are also not that smooth there. We see how the regular agents of the Alliance are fleeing from the hellfire that Astro Toilets were sending upon them from the sky. And by the way, in this scene, we can see someone's mysterious silhouette in the green light right there that disappears after the explosion in front of the POV. And you already know better than me that the green light indicates of the secret agent's presence and his apprentices. And I also wonder if the secret agent still watches all this insanity that Astro Toilets cause, though? because it may be really important later. And then we can also notice how this speakerman just disappears from the frame after reaching the fire next to this car. But I suppose that it just could be the rendering mistake given that he appears again within a second, and it's not that deep. Meanwhile, Titan TV Man says that the only thing he'd like to meet G-Man for is to organize his funeral due to all the evil he caused to the Alliance and Earth in general and that he can't wrap his head around the fact that some agents of the Alliance are ready to trust him and unite with Skibidi Toilets. And these words sound pretty funny in comparison with the visual Amsterdam footage where Skibidi Toilets get destroyed the same as the agents, which literally proves that both sides have the perfect motivation to join forces. Then the footage gets switched to Birmingham, UK, where the sad aftermath of the regular battle with Astro Toilets is shown. We can see the dismembered and deformed bodies of the poor agents everywhere. But what's even sadder is that we can notice the mauled human remains too. All that is proving one simple fact that Astro Toilets are way too powerful, and there's simply no way to defeat them without uniting the forces together, because otherwise the planet would simply be cooked. And that's exactly what TV Man Scientist is saying, because this footage is a proof that even the weakest Astro Troop can cause a great harm to the whole legions of warriors. And by the way, in this moment, we can notice another silhouette in the window. And this time, I'm pretty sure that it's the secret agent himself. And he also disappears just like the previous guy. But not after the explosion, but with the lighting strike instead. And I also paid attention to this sign on the right near empty toilet, which apparently says, No stops, time away zone. Although it's really difficult to discern exactly what's written there, but if it includes the word time, then it definitely foreshadows something interesting. And then afterwards, the POV from Amsterdam faces the Astro Troop, who is most likely responsible for all these war atrocities. 
But at the moment the cameraman takes him at aim, the Astro disappears, or goes into invisibility mode. And we already saw that ability that some Astro toilets use, later in episode 77. Of course, the POV is not able to detect the invisible enemy and gets beheaded by this Astro's huge sword, who smiles like crazy while dismembering another agent. The footage switches again, this time to Japan where we see the samurai cameramen for the first time, and it looks really cool. And the design of these new types of cameramen really got me the Skibidi Genesis vibe from chasing Skylar's multiverse. And below him, we can notice the speaker man holding the hammer. And this time, it reminded me of Skibidi Multiverse by No Skill Clutch, where one cameraman was also operating with the hammer. Plus, Boom also made plenty of references to different Skibidi Multiverses in episode 74, so I believe that he could make something similar this time as well. The cameraman on the stairs looks as if he was dressed in some sort of red latex suit under his coat, and the group below him is even funnier. We can see the Skibidi toilet with the samurai sword and a straw hat, and there is also a human skeleton which we can notice behind him. The speaker man next to him is holding the Astro Toilet samples which he and his squad apparently plan to deliver to the closest Alliance's base, but of course some Astro troops stop them from doing so. And by the way, check out this deformed head in the toilet with the shuriken blade on it. Yeah, it's definitely giving Japan, guys. And there were also a lot of signs in Japanese all over this territory, but I think that it was the standard part of the map Boom used to include in his secret scene, and nothing important or Skibidi related can be found in the translations of these signs. We can also hear the words from Titan TV Man responding to the arguments from his scientist, as he's saying that after the Alliance will gather enough bigger Astro Toilet samples and develop stronger upgrades, everything will be fine just like before. But well, Apparently, all these upgrades that the Japanese agents were already having did not help them not to get destroyed. And as the footage switches to Alaska, TV Man Scientist tells the Titan that everything is not like before, and the only advantage they have is being underground and in secrecy, and it's extremely important to go slow, steady, and cautious, because in case the Astro Faction will find out their base and access their technology, the end of the world will be imminent. And I strongly believe that while saying this, TV Man Scientist meant the base and laboratory of TV Men exactly, and not the Alliance in general. And the technologies he was talking about was most likely the ability of TV Men to teleport. This technology was already stolen by the Skibidi Scientist, and he tried to use it at the end of Episode 70, but it was cancelled by the Polycephaly TV Man. So, we know that TV Men's teleportation can be stolen and then added to the invisibility technique that Astro Toilets already have and also to their extreme speed. All of these abilities in total would simply make them impossible to beat, and that indeed would lead to the end of the whole world and universe and not just planet Earth. Then we're getting shown Canada as well as the Astro Fleet that already captured the country, and Titan TV Man hopelessly says, Our world has already ended. It's there now. But then we see Denver's agents, who don't seem to be that devastated, though. And I immediately cackled while seeing the cameraman with the iconic cat ears, who we could see in the second part of episode 77. And this guy with his legs widespread definitely thinks that he's some action movie hero or something. And it's not the first time he does that in the series, too, as he could already be seen squatting in the air in this scene from episode 77, part 2. And this big cameraman with the Warhammer sword is also from the same chapter. So yeah, for now these guys are still in the pretty great mood, even despite everything that Titan TV Man said right now. And those preparations were already happening right before the events of Episode 77. And while looking at them, the Titan adds, That is not enough power. They've lost their guidance. And well, since that moment, the secret scene is emerging with the YouTube shorts that Boom published much earlier where Titan TV Man was telling TV Man Scientist about his special plan in order to save the reckless agents he just saw on screen. And after that, the four parts of the regular episode 77 start to play. And I've noticed no special changes about them. So let's move right to the second secret scene, which is even crazier than the first one. So after G-Man and Astro Juggernaut move away to have a date in private, we see what happens after Titan TV Man teleported to the base with the Juggernaut's cannon. And the POV changes too. And let me tell you right away that it is no other than Elite TV Man who we saw back in Episode 74. At least based on the purple swords attached to his arms, which we could notice in that scene.
And remember the camera that was attached on his chest so that cameramen could observe what is happening in the Skibidi base he infiltrated? Well, apparently, he put it right back on after the secret conversation with TV man scientist during which he was putting it off. And that's how we can see all the events from his point of view. So we see how Titan TV man slowly walks in the laboratory and yep, he's pretty much as battered up and broken as you remember from the last episode. And by the way, next to him we can see the lying smaller cannon from some astro toilet. His main TV screen is completely shattered and it's just a miracle that it's still somehow attached to his body. And the fact that he's still capable of moving, speaking and thinking on his own proves that at least the titans of the Alliance do not require their heads being intact in order to keep functioning. But he still looks horrible. So TV man scientist exclaims, Look at yourself! Why did you stay? To which the titan answers, You needed samples. I brought you samples. And then he puts the cannon stolen from Astro Juggernaut down. TV man scientist then abruptly says, Why? Gate! It's not closing! By which he meant that the portal from Titan TV Man's teleportation indeed did not close after he arrived, and then we can see the horrified expression on his main TV screen. But what's interesting here, though, is that TV Man in the black coat next to him shows absolutely no fear or terror. And if you guys don't remember, this guy was always one of the cruelest and most cold-blooded TV men in the whole Skibidi Toilet series who never showed any direct emotions or insecurities. He was always giving me extremely cold vibes, and now there's no exception too. Okay, and starting with that moment, Skibidi Toilet started to become a horror movie again. The scary music starts playing as if we are an insidious type of movie, as Titan TV Man looks behind and sees that the teleportation gate is indeed still open. Elite TV Man, who is currently the POV, quickly glimpses at the tablet in front of him to see what is going on in the battlefield from the eyes of some random cameraman. So we see that some sort of whirlwind is occurring next to the place Titan TV Man teleported from. And in the next moment, it becomes obvious to us that it is the upgraded UFO toilet who is creating this phenomenon. And I'm not gonna lie, he looks pretty damn sick during that moment. And before that, we didn't see the UFO toilet participating in the battles directly. Usually he was just kinda always around some hot spots, but Boom didn't show us any of his special abilities aside from hyperspace speed. But now I can see that Boom was hyping us up for some really sick moment involving this guy. And this moment occurred today. So apparently the UFO toilet's main ability is to capture the teleportation trail of TV men, which allowed the other members of his squad to catch this opportunity and finish the deed. And now this role would be played by Astro Duchess. And oh my God, speaking of that chick, just look at her guys. All this time we were craving for Titan G-Man, who would have robotic hands and legs that would allow him to operate and function just like any Titan of the Alliance. But in the end, Jimmy turned out to be quite underwhelming, and I wondered why. Well, now I understand. Boom was falsely hyping us about G-Man's upgrades while it was Astro Duchess who was always meant to steal all the spotlight. Oh my god, listen guys, I promised that I'd never simp for anyone but Speaker Woman on this channel because I'm the Chad and all that stuff. But looking at this girl, I just cannot help but say mommy. She looks freaking fabulous. And you know what? It was really vile of Boom to give us such a treat in a form of upgraded Astro Duchess by the end of November, if you catch my drift, of course. Okay, I kind of got carried away, so let's be more serious now. So after her epic arrival, she says to Titan TV Man, where do you think you're going, silly? After which, she unleashes all of her four claws into the whirlwind that didn't allow the Titan's portal to close. So Titan TV Man turns out to be right in front of them. But instead of running away as quick as possible, he just stands on one spot and stares at them and then, um, he tries to punch it, I suppose? In any case, that was not his wisest decision for sure. One of the claws pierces his already broken TV screen, and then all the other claws immobilize his completely. Damn, this girl is freaky and I think that the Titan himself realized it just now as he slowly said, I can't move. You sure thing can't bud, but you know where you could move though? Literally a few seconds ago when you still had the time window to escape or at least try to. But what's done can't be undone, I guess. In the next moment, he gets pulled out on the battlefield again while all the other TV men are still frozen at one spot, completely speechless. And they won't be able to help their big brother anyway because a second after a couple of Astro Obliterators arrive to their laboratory and start blasting everything and everyone down. Elite TV Man also gets his weapons ready, and in this moment we can see that the TV Men's lab is literally filled to the brim with different samples from Astro Toilets. 
and you're still asking more guys? I mean, you prefer to prioritize Astro samples over saving the lives of your wounded or lost agents. But in this shot, we can see that they already have more than plenty, though. Now I understand the Sergeant Mutant Girl from the first secret scene even better, because damn, she was actually right. But we don't have much time to berate TV men, because trust me, guys, their race will already be punished more than enough in this full episode. Everyone who was present in this room start fighting the newcomers, including elite TV man and polycephaly, swiftly operating his astro-like claws nearby. And they are also being helped greatly with many other devices placed in this room. For example, this giant TV screen, which was capable of switching different glow modes as well, and one reckless astro almost fell victim to it. And this huge purple core also helped a lot, which looks like a huge source of power to me, which is possibly fueling the whole TV men's base. And I wonder if this can be the purple analog of the blue beam we could see in Camera Woman's flashbacks from episode 73, the one that was an object of their human team's experiments. But let's not delve way too deep into this now, because otherwise my analysis would become too long. So aside from powering up the entire TV men's base, this huge purple thing can actually bite too. And that's what happened to the Astro Toilet that flew too close to it. Meanwhile, Polycephaly knocks down another flying trooper and then notices something really fishy attached to his body. He pulls it out and realizes that it was a tracking device and that the purpose of all these Astro Toilets was not to destroy TV men in their base, but to simply reveal its location. And as you can remember from the first secret scene, the TV men's base was supposed to be concealed from the other creature's attention as secretiveness was always the main strength of TV men's race. And now their upper hand is basically gone Yep, that sounds like a disaster, and everyone who found out about the tracking device realized that. Now TV Men's laboratory full of the most precious stuff, samples and results of monthly old researches are exposed to the enemy, and somehow that's still not the worst thing that's about to happen to those poor guys in the full episode. But we'll get to that. Meanwhile, another fallen Astro Toilet's head starts screaming like crazy, basically mirroring the ending of Episode 77 Part 1 and then the body of that Astro self-detonates. And to be honest, I didn't understand exactly what caused this explosion. But if you guys have some thoughts about it, be sure to write about it in the comments below so I could see what I missed. And there was another moment that left me in confusion too. So when the survived TV men were leaving the base in a hurry, I noticed some lost big cameraman that can be noticed right here in this frame. And then he disappears, which was pretty weird to me. And besides, what would the big cameraman do in the TV men's laboratory anyway? The explosion caused enormous damage to the inner part of the base, and as the POV looks back, we can see more TV men crowding near the entrance. Aside from TV man scientist and the cynical guy in the dark coat, there is also TV woman who got the similar blade upgrades just as elite TV man. But pay your attention to this one guy standing on the right with a silly smile on his face. What's so funny, Lil Bro? Your base is exposed, everything is ruined and falling apart. So what causes you so much happiness? This looks pretty damn suspicious. Plus Boom put a huge accent on this guy's figure a lot. So I'm pretty sure that this smiley ball of joy will be revealed later, either as a traitor or a total psychopath. Nothing in between. And what seems even weirder about him is that his body is also damaged. And that's why we can see purple flames on his back. Yeah, definitely not creepy at all. Meanwhile, all the TV men hear the alarm setting off, and then we can see via the big TV screen the snowy Alaska location we were shown earlier, and the TV men's base in hidden underground within the area. And that's another moment from the leak sent to stake by Boom, and I remember it clearly. So, just as it was on the leaks, Astro Mothership appeared right above this location. And before I'll continue, let me give you only one thought to analyze. How would Astro Mothership manage to get to Alaska, one of the farthest places from human civilization so quickly? Namely, within seconds after the base was exposed by the tracking device. There can be only one explanation for that. Apparently, Astro Toilets already managed to steal TV Men's technology, such as teleportation, which was the worst fear of TV Man scientist. And if I am right about this, then, well, apparently the world's end is already coming, and there should be only a miracle to stop it. Okay, and then we see how Astro Mothership causes the huge explosion that basically wipes out half of the area with the power like that. And every single TV man underground can feel the effects of such disaster. But that doesn't stop the suspicious TV man from smiling like an idiot. 
Maybe he's just so traumatized that he keeps smiling not to go insane. Maybe he already did become insane. I wonder what you guys think about it. And meanwhile, TV man scientist approaches the giant square made of four smaller squares in black, white, gray, and purple colors. And we can see how the hour hand moves from white to black, which apparently means, well, nothing good, I believe. And I think that this device could be the indicator that shows the level of the whole base's energy. And it's most likely that after the huge explosion occurred, all the energy got drained or cut off. Or there is another possibility too. Maybe it is not the indicator, but the special device which purpose it to teleport away the entire base if it gets spotted or attacked by someone incredibly dangerous. And I feel like both options are relevant for TV men right now. That's why we saw the device getting connected to the huge purple energy source, after which the whole place got clouded with black fog and we can hear the teleportation sounds. And here's when the episode gets even creepier than it already was. Everyone starts teleporting away as well, one by one. But guess who still remains at the base? The smiling TV man whose screen is still glowing in the dark. And as if it wasn't enough for y'all, then we can hear an incredibly unsettling whisper mixed with some exterior sounds that make it really difficult for me to discern what exactly was said in that whisper. But I tried my best. So I removed all the music and volumed the voices up to the max. And here's what I heard. If it's nighttime in your place, then, well, I wish the best of luck to you as it would be quite difficult to sleep peacefully after something like this. When I put this audio in reverse, I've heard as if some male was saying the words, my Kate, apparently addressing his wife. Maybe those are the voices of humans, or it is the flashbacks of TV man scientist from the times when he was a human as well. Then the woman answers him something. And after that, we can hear the terrified screams of someone who seems to be a little girl. Now what the hell was that? This literally sounded cursed. And I don't really want to even think about the reason why the girl screamed like that. Is this still the old good skibidi toilet we're watching right now, guys? And after that, we see the figure of TV man scientist standing to us with his back turned, staring into complete darkness. And aside from different TV screens, there is something really interesting that can be found on his desk. On the right, we can see the framed photo featuring him apparently and someone who looks awfully similar to either Dave or the secret agent. They seem to be hugging, but I'm not that sure because the image is really dark. But if it's really either of these two, then I'll make a separate theory video regarding it because this is just crazy. And there's also a red screen with the word warning flashing on it. The man slowly turns towards us and we can see his face with the glasses on them. In general, he doesn't look anything peculiar. He just reminds me an intelligent and pretty tired man probably with some traumatic experience from his past allegedly connected to his family. And if my assumptions about him are correct, then it would mean that he's not an evil mastermind or something like this, but a regular scientist doing his job. And that not all TV men are cynical, cold-blooded manipulators as it could seem from the most recent Skibidi toilet episodes. Then we see the brief footage saying the location of another base which is at the abandoned prison on the North Sea coast and I believe that's where TV man scientist, TV woman, and elite TV man will move out next as the key members of their race. Maybe they'll try to restore some parts of their research, but I won't be theorizing on that too much. Okay, but what's happening to Titan TV man though? While the TV men's base was experiencing a really tough raid, the Titan was also been getting served something rough and painful, by which I mean Astro Duchess flailing his ah with the heated whip and although I feel pretty sorry for the Titan who is getting humiliated to the moon and back, I still can't help but also feel something... different. But let's not talk about it right now, because November has still not ended. After some good flailing, Astro Duchess asks the Titan, How do you like the pain? To which he replies with, It takes more than that to hurt me. And after those words, the UFO toilet flies closer and whispers, This is just the beginning. And unfortunately for the Titan, he was right. Because then the huge orange Astro Corps gets transported from the carrier ship nearby, which also contains some rough screams from Stake that Boom used in his series. 
And this new Astro Core starts, um, literally forcing itself upon Titan TV Man's original Purple Core. And in the end, the new Freaky Core managed to get what it wanted. So now, Titan TV Man got literally turned to the dark side. By which I mean the Siths, of course. Unfortunately, our brother did not survive this November F to respect guys. And after switching sides, the Titan slowly gets up and the UFO says to him, Serve you, new master Watchman of Doom. After which the Titan looks straight to the survived cameraman POV and shoots him off the existence forever. And in that really grim note, the second secret scene ends. And that was all for today. Write in the comments below about how excited you were to finally watch the full episode. And be sure to subscribe to my channel not to miss my new videos. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!